Good day, everybody. This is Michael Fiebig with Fiebig Architecture. And today we are going to be talking about uh, damp proofing and waterproofing foundations. We're going to be talking about uh, the difference between the two systems because a lot of times uh, these two terms, damp proofing and waterproofing, are used um, sometimes mistakenly interchangeably, and the terms are not. Uh, they're not actually interchangeable. And so we're gonna do a quick lesson today just to kind of go over the differences and, and their uh, applicability in, in the building code. So um, from the 2018 code and commentary, that's what we're gonna be using to, to look at this uh, code section today. Damp proofing and waterproofing, section 1805. Uh, that's chapter 18 of the code. And uh, the general provision states uh, walls or portions thereof that retain earth and enclose interior spaces and floors below grade shall be waterproofed and damp proofed in accordance with this section. So what we're talking about are uh, basement walls, below grade, cellar walls, crawl space walls, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the best way to think about this is if you have a concrete foundation and on one side, like the exterior side, the ground level is higher than the ground level on the inside of that uh, foundation wall, then, then this provision will apply. If the ground level is, is not different, meaning if you had like a, a slab on grade foundation and you have footings and those footings go down three feet or so below grade and you have earth on both sides, then, then you don't need to damp proof or waterproof because in that case, there, there's nowhere for uh, there, there's no uh, risk of water moving through uh, to an interior uh, location. So this is these are the, these code sections apply to walls or portions thereof that retain earth. So that that's really kind of the key there to, to remember. <clears throat> so damp proofing versus waterproofing. Uh, what's the difference? They they're they're uh, uh, they're not exactly the same. Uh, to Keep it simple, damp proofing is less robust and waterproofing is intended to resist water under pressure, meaning hydrostatic pressure. So uh, the, the, a good way to, to think about damp proofing is the type of, of treatment you need on the foundation in the absence of hydrostatic pressure. Now I know the commentary here to the code does say that damp proofing can resist slight hydrostatic pressure, uh, but as we're going to see, um, the, the code establishes kind of that criteria, how, how you determine whether or not uh, you have a hydrostatic water condition, uh, which will then inform you whether or not you need to damp proof or waterproof your foundation walls. Um, again, here, here's a little bit of uh, commentary from the code commentary. If, if you uh, wanna read that, uh, feel free to pause the video and, and take a look. So the first step, uh, is determining the groundwater conditions at the site, right? That, that's, that's obviously uh, the, the criteria here. Do you have a high water table? Do you have a low water table? Uh, is it seasonal? What, what do you have? So um, this section of the code requires a subsurface soil investigation, also known as a geotechnical report or a geotech report. Uh, that's where they, they drill the uh, soils at the site uh, to determine, uh, among other things, groundwater table levels. And so um, the criteria here is to determine whether the existing groundwater table is above or within five feet below the elevation of the lowest floor level. <clears throat> and the rule for damp proofing is essentially if no hydrostatic conditions exist, you damp proof. So 1805.2 says this, it says where hydrostatic pressure will not occur as determined by section 1803.5.4, that's the, the geotechnical report, uh, floors and walls for other than wood foundation systems shall be damp proofed in accordance with this section. So um, uh, omitting wood be foundations because that's really just not a common thing anymore. Uh, wood foundations be constructed in accordance with, with uh, a different uh, standard. However, concrete, uh, concrete foundations, masonry foundations, um, if you do not have a hydrostatic pressure condition, but you do have foundation walls that retain earth and enclose space below grade, 
then damp proofing is your default requirement. If you have groundwater, uh, and, and again, it, per 1803.5.4, that's the geotech report, uh, it says where the groundwater investigation indicates that a hydrostatic pressure condition exists and the design does not include a groundwater control system as described in 1805.1.3, walls and floors shall be waterproofed in accordance with this section. So again, the general rule of thumb, if you do have hydrostatic uh, conditions, or if you anticipate that hydrostatic conditions will exist, then uh, the foundation is required to be waterproofed unless a groundwater system is installed. And really a ground, the groundwater system as described in section 1805.1.3 essentially is, is essentially a, a permanent dewatering system that's intended to uh, um, actively keep the groundwater levels lower than, than the building. So if you have if you have a groundwater control system such as this, then then you uh, you don't have to have waterproofing because in that case then you don't you, you're mitigating the uh, hydrostatic water conditions due to the high water table. If if you mitigate that by by dewatering the uh, foundation permanently, then um, then you can damp proof and you don't have to waterproof. But if you don't have a groundwater control system, which for most smaller scale projects, uh, residential and small commercial, you're likely not going to have a permanent dewatering system on site. And so in those cases, it's, it's much more common just to waterproof your foundation. So also it's important, don't forget the subsoil drainage system. This is what is commonly referred to as the foundation drain. Uh, the foundation drain, uh, courtesy of the code the International Code Council's commentary. They include a diagram here that helps illustrate the concept. Uh, you can see in this particular diagram, we have our foundation wall, we have exterior grade, we have our interior uh, below grade, um, and damp proofing in this case, or if, if it was, if you had a, a hydrostatic condition, then that would be waterproofing. But here's here's your foundation drain, right? And that that's really simply um, where uh, storm water and water that percolates through the soils or or otherwise reaches that pipe. Uh, that'll keep the foundation um, dry, <clears throat> or at least it'll 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 help to transport uh, that water um, away from the foundation. It'll help keep it dry. So here is an example of a waterproof foundation. Um, typically your waterproofing is going to be a darker color, thicker, uh, sometimes black colored. It's, it's a thicker, more robust treatment to the foundation. Uh, here is an example of a damp proofed foundation. Typically there's going to be a little bit of a lighter color, not as robust, not as thick, um, applied to, to the foundation. Uh, it's important to know though, that visual visual observation is not always enough to determine whether or not you're looking at a waterproofed or damp proofed foundation, but general, many times uh, just looking at it, you can tell um, if it's a really thick, dark system, it's likely waterproofing. If it's thinner, thinner coating, likely it's a damp proofed system. Anyway, I hope this uh, quick lesson was uh, valuable for you. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.